The Airbus A321XLR has recently gained some popularity, and everyone is discussing about how it might change aviation in many ways. In today's video we will discuss on the same topic. First, we will see what are the differences between the A321XLR and the old generation A320 family aircraft. Then, we discuss on how it might change aviation. Then we will talk about the disadvantages of this aircraft. And at last, we will also take a look at the competitors that the A321XLR has to watch out for. So, let's start with the differences from its old generation variants. The Airbus A320 family aircraft are classified into two variants, the CO and the NEO. The word CO stands for current engine option, and the word NEO stands for new engine option. The A320neo is much more fuel efficient, quieter, and emits very less greenhouse gases, compared to the A320CO variants. But the new A321XLR will have the ability to fly twice the range of the A321CO aircraft, that is 4700 nautical miles or 8700 kilometers. The A321XLR also can carry an additional 4 tons weight than the A321neo aircraft, that is 101 tons. One of the main reasons why the aircraft is able to fly long distances is because the aircraft has an additional rear center fuel tank capable of holding 12,900 liters of fuel, all thanks to the aircraft's design. Now that we have taken a look at the differences, let's discuss how the A321XLR might change aviation. For years, there was a kind of aircraft that airlines needed, which could seat around 230 passengers, which would have a range of around 5,000 nautical miles, be very highly fuel efficient, and have a size of a stretched narrow body aircraft or a short and wide body aircraft. For that Boeing came up with the idea of the Boeing 737 MAX, which almost matched the expectations of the airlines, but Airbus was the first to offer such an aircraft to the airlines, that was the A321XLR. The aircraft could fly a total distance of 8,700 kilometers and seat around 180 to 220 passengers, depending on the configuration. It is also said that the plane is around 15 to 20 percent more fuel efficient than the A321neo. With such awesome features it matches all the expectations from the airlines, making it an almost perfect plane. Also, the aircraft will be able to connect South Africa with the Middle East, the East with the West, and much more destinations. It could also be deployed on high-demand routes, such as New York and London, Sydney and Singapore and much more. It will also result in a rise of huge competition between airlines, as there will be cheaper fares available. As of now, airlines are retiring their large wide-body jets and switching to more fuel-efficient aircraft, and the A321XLR is a great choice for them. Now let's talk about some disadvantages of this aircraft. Even though the A321XLR might seem like a perfect aircraft, it also comes along with its own set of disadvantages, that is, the crew rest area. A crew rest area is a place with lie flat beds, where the crew rest on long flights. Normally in widebody jets like the 777, we can find the crew rest area, but we won't find them on narrow body aircraft, such as the A320 and the 737. Now that the A321XLR is a narrow body, things like the crew rest area will not be a thing, all due to the lack of space. Also, passengers could also suffer with dense seating, a single aisle, less galley and aisle space to stretch and wait for bathrooms. Airbus is also trying to compensate for the smaller space by adding mood lighting, it may ease up passengers, but it won't make much difference for the crew, who are flying repeated sectors. Now, let's have a look at the other aircrafts that the A321XLR has to watch out for. The main competitor for the A321XLR will be the Boeing 737 MAX, excluding the MAX, planes like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner are also in competition with the XLR, as these both can operate on the pretty same routes. Boeing is also planning to make the Boeing 797, which is going to be a mid-size jet that will also compete with the A321XLR. Well, for now the 797 has a long way to go before it turns into reality. Well for now, we can keep the Dreamliner and the 797 aside, and talk about the main competitor, the Boeing 737 MAX 10. The A321XLR has a range of 8700 km, while the MAX only has a range of 6110 km. Next comes maximum capacity, the XLR can carry 240 passengers, while the MAX can carry 230 passengers. 
The maximum takeoff weight of the XLR is 101 tons, and the MAX again lacks behind by only having 92 tons as the maximum takeoff weight. The A321 XLR is also expected to be more fuel efficient than the 737 MAX. With the Airbus A321 XLR having more spacious cabins compared to the MAX, we can say that the passenger experience will also be better on the XLR. So, we can conclude the video by saying that the A321 XLR is a much better choice for airlines and as well as for passengers too. So guys, that was it for today's video, hope you liked it, if you have, then please consider subscribing to the channel and share this with all your friends interested in aviation. And also, this is my first video of the year 2021, so I wish you all, a very happy new year. Well then, see you all in the next video, until then, goodbye.